Mark Anelsky, you do something uh, uh, quite interesting called the Genuine Progress Indicator. What is that and why should I care about it? Uh, the GPI is trying to measure the things that, about, that matter most to people. So, for example, not just GDP, but uh, debt levels, uh, health issues, education, ecological footprint. So what we're trying to do is create a more comprehensive portrait of well-being. And so the GPI is a, is a set of indicators that looks at well-being in, in harmony and makes sure that we show that there's a balanced approach to measurement, not just one focus or, or singular focus, say, on, on, on GDP, but against ecological footprint, against air quality, water quality, etc. So the idea is to, to if you pardon the word, uh, take a holistic look at the economy. Right. So if the GDP is growing, what's water quality index doing? What's the carbon budget doing? What are, what's domestic violence doing? What's uh, self-rated happiness doing? We can track these things now in a more interesting ways and make decisions differently. Say you're a city of Edmonton uh, or you're the head of, of, uh, of even a corporation could use this approach. So you've done a number of these. Where, where, where have you done work on uh, genuine progress indicators? Uh, in the U.S., we did the U.S. GPI, Alberta, with Pemina Institute. Most recently with the city of Edmonton. The chief economist hired me to replicate the Alberta GPI and said we want the same indicators tracked from 1980 to 2009. So we just finished that work last year. So what did you track and what did you learn? Uh, we tracked everything from the GDP to household debt, uh, we looked at things like domestic violence. Uh, it turns out domestic violence is moving in lockstep with GDP. Uh, we discovered that our gigajoules of natural gas has been going down, which is good news, and kilowatt hours of electricity has been going down. So our carbon footprint has actually been improving, which is a good news story. You know, waste to landfill is being reduced, recycling has been improving. So we, a lot of good news stories, uh, actually, and some areas of, of trouble in terms of, say, domestic violence. So in the mix, you have an interesting report now to city council saying, yes, the economy is growing, but there's these other things that are going on, some positive, some negative. So you can make just wiser decisions. So how many indicators did you track? Uh, 50 indicators for Edmonton. So you found some really interesting correlations, I guess. So, so what you're saying is as GDP, which is just a measure of economic activity, goes up, Domestic violence has it been going is also up. going up, and there's a high R squared correlation between them. Same with commuting times. Commuting times keeps going up about 30 seconds every year. So if we, the question becomes, do we want to keep growing this economy? Therefore, we're going to keep growing commuting times, right? Or is domestic violence related to economic growth? I don't know, but it, it it raises some interesting conversations about what direction do we want to take our community in, in the future. So how's our environment doing? Actually, very well. I mean, it's surprising. River water quality has been improving. Air quality, with some exceptions, uh, particular matter, uh, has been improving overall. And as I said, the our material footprint, at least the waste to landfill, has been going down. And the surprising thing for me was that gigajoules of gas per capita has been going down, uh, which suggests that whatever we're doing at the household level, improving, we've done energy audits, is, is having some positive effect reducing our carbon footprint, which is really good news. I would argue that Canadians on average are meeting the one ton challenge, in part, um, if it wasn't for light trucks and our minivans. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, why haven't I heard about this? This sounds like a great story. It's, it really... a great, it's a great story and I tell the environment guys in Edmonton that, you know, we need to, you guys need to tell the story. Like Rick Mercer has challenged, in part Canadians have met this, but the data is buried in Environment Canada's uh, Greenhouse Gas Emissions Inventory Report. And the story isn't out. The story so, needs to get out. So, Mark, you've done this work for uh, Edmonton on the Genuine Progress Indicator, and I know from looking at some of your previous work that the, uh, the, re the reports that go into this contain all kinds of little insightful gems. Uh, where do I find this? Uh, the Edmonton GPI report is actually on the City of Edmonton's website under their business uh, planning section. You can also find it on my website, anielski.com. I've got links to that, that report. So it's publicly available. Uh, so uh, where do you go from here with GPI? Well, I, I think that the, the next frontier is actually to, to convince the city of Edmonton. I've already been in discussions with the chief financial officer about the, my original vision as a balance sheet. How do we take a balance sheet approach to understanding sustainability so that we know how much land we have to grow food in Edmonton, our area of wetlands, tree cover for a carbon budget, 
those are the assets that we need to put on a balance sheet. But there is no balance sheet. So we have indicators, but we still need to do some work on this idea of a balance sheet for, for the city. So thank you very much, Mark. So thanks for talking about the GPI. But uh, just before we go, what's the name of your book and where can I get that? Uh, the Economics of Happiness, Building Genuine Wealth. Uh, available at local bookstores, Greenwoods, Audrey's, Chapters even, Amazon if you like. Published by New Society Publishers. Or come to my place for espresso. And I have a few boxes <laughs> and I'll sign them. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. Nice.